So I sent Sergeant Weiss down there uh, and uh, got some um, German girls who uh, became uh, the servants uh, at Schloss Langenzell and cleaned it all up. Period. The following day, um, I came up there with uh, Colonel Winning, and he was very pleased at what he saw. Uh, he was most sympathetic and compassionate and s turned to me and said that uh, he wanted uh, to do everything possible for these uh, people. Hazel Korn was there a good deal of the time, <coughs> uh, was their counselor, did a great deal for them, and uh, helped take care of their needs. It so happens that um, the camp became a uh, uh, rather well-known uh, uh, camp in the area, and uh, in uh, the early days, all kinds of American soldiers came up to bring things uh, to the residents of Schloss Langenzell. These included both Jews and non-Jews, and uh, they uh, all were uh, marvelous. The uh, DPs, uh, the Jewish survivors, really enjoyed their company, and many a, a festive occasion for American GIs who brought clothing and um, food, uh, books, and so forth, uh, was held uh, at Schloss Langenzell. Uh, at Schloss Langenzell, we maintained a um, uh, bulletin board and a locator service. And uh, one of the things I remember most vividly is the rejoining of a wife with her husband, who was a resident of Langenzell, period. He and I were standing uh, in front of the uh, building out in the open discussing uh, some of the things that were happening there when uh, I suddenly saw him uh, turn pale and stare right through me. And I looked, and there was a woman coming up the road with a pack on her back uh, and beginning to run. They, and he ran towards her. They threw, threw themselves into each other's arms and uh, uh, kissed and laughed, uh, period. This was the reunion of a husband and wife, uh, period. She had found out through the locator service that her husband was at Schloss Langenzell. New paragraph. The first mention of Schloss Langenzell in the uh, weekly reports which I gave to the uh, commander of our uh, uh, section was on June 21st, 1940, no, on, on June 14th, 1945, in which uh, I said, quotes, we have opened a small convalescent camp for the persecuted from concentration camps. It is an in an old castle in Langenzell, about 15 kilometers from Heidelberg. The grounds are very beautiful, and when the castle is cleaned and grounds in order, it will be an ideal place for people to recover, period. Two UNRWA workers under the direction of Lieutenant Plesner, P-L-E-A-S-N-E-R, uh, of the Heidelberg Landkreis Detachment, will operate the camp. At present, its population is 200 and uh, 50, period. Lieutenant Cal Plesner uh, lives in St. Louis. He is Jewish, and he did a tremendous job with the uh, Jewish survivors at Schloss Langenzell. He certainly should be recognized for the job that he did, period. Schloss Langenzell was a, an ideal place for convalescent care and for our uh, Jewish uh, survivors. However, sometime in July, we received orders to evacuate our displaced persons from Schloss Langenzell and to set up a camp in Stuttgart. Uh, I went up to uh, uh, Stuttgart 
uh, to look at the place that was designated. It was a uh, large apartment complex, uh, very well uh, uh, furnished and nicely situated, period. Sergeant Weiss and I believe Rabbi Hazel Cohen and myself uh, gave the orders for all German families uh, to vacate their apartments within uh, a few hours and not taking anything but their own personal belongings, leaving furniture, etc., in the apartment. On, uh, during the week which ended on August 8, 1945, my report shows that uh, on, this, on August 2nd, we moved the 150 Jews from Langenzell to Stuttgart and set them up in th these apartments. The move, uh, with one exception, was by trucks, and uh, we took all of their belongings and whatever furniture they uh, wanted to take with them. An interesting sidelight uh, to this move was the fact that um, some of the people at Langenzell had gone into business and they had somehow or other acquired a horse and wagon with which they carried on their business with farmers in the area. Even though military government instructions were that they could not take the horse and wagon, I must confess that somehow or other the horse and wagon got to Stuttgart and uh, continued to be used for whatever business these Jewish survivors wanted to use it for. It uh, was a very interesting play on the persistence uh, of uh, Jewish survivors of the Nazi concentration camp. New paragraph. In the Stuttgart apartment camp, uh, the Jewish survivors began to live again as, uh, as normally as possible. There were no uh, wire offenses around. Uh, there was no uh, regulation that they had to have a pass to leave. Uh, it was as if they were living uh, in uh, a normal way in their own apartments. Uh, we set that up uh, in a way that there wasn't even a central dining room, but we used what would have been the central dining room uh, for uh, a warehouse and for a place to which the people came to draw their rations so that they could eat in their own uh, dining room and cook in their own kitchen in their apartment. We made it as close to family living as it was as as was possible, and we found that this raise the morale of the uh, Jewish survivor and uh, made for a no more normal way of life. As uh, word began to seep out through uh, into uh, Jewish DP camps throughout Germany, more and more uh, Jewish survivors came to the apartment complex uh, and become residents of the camp, period. As usual, the camp was run by a committee uh, headed by uh, Meyer Goodman, uh, and uh, it was run uh, very well, at least while I was supervising the UNRWA team that was responsible for its uh, operation. Rabbi Hazel Korn had a great deal to do with the way the uh, camp was run and uh, with its uh, residents. Uh, he was uh, both their father and their mother during this period. New paragraph. At a later date, it, uh, the, the uh, Stuttgart area and the area of Württemberg was taken away from our uh, military government detachment, and I no longer had the responsibility for Stuttgart, period. However, there is an inter incident that you might be interested in for your records, and uh, that is uh, when, uh, when General Eisenhower began to review some of the DP camps, uh, he came to Stuttgart to see this camp because of its 
fine reputation uh, throughout uh, Germany uh, period. At that time, uh, the camp uh, was under the supervision of a, another military government uh, detachment under the command of a Lieutenant Colonel Newman, of a full Colonel Newman, and uh, the DP officer was a Lieutenant Colonel whose name I uh, cannot recall. I was assigned to take Eisenhower on a tour of DP camps in the area, and I was with him <coughs> in uh, uh, Stuttgart. Uh, an, an incident that occurred uh, is worthy of uh, telling and recording. Uh, as we, we, we inspected the apartments, and uh, as uh, Eisenhower and his party were walking along with uh, Meyer Gutmann as chairman of the Survivors Committee on I, I Eisenhower's left and Colonel Newman uh, next to Meyer Gutmann on his left, and the lieutenant colonel in charge of DPs uh, on his left, and Hutler walking behind Eisenhower. Eisenhower turned to uh, uh, Goodman and uh, said to him that uh, it must be very wonderful for his people to be able to live in a uh, uh, normal way of life in an apartment to be able to eat in their own dining room and their own kitchen, and uh, he was so very pleased with what he had seen, period. Goodman said to him, General, this is uh, uh, the way it should be, and this is the way it was when uh, Lieutenant Hutler uh, was responsible for the camp. But since there has been a change of responsibility, uh, the lieutenant colonel uh, in charge has opened up a central dining room. There are no more rations being drawn, and we are now eating as if we were in camp again, period. Eisenhower then turned to Colonel Newman, and without looking at the lieutenant colonel, said to Newman, you ought to do something about that. If I had an officer under my command who did something as stupid as that, I would uh, certainly uh, take him off that job, period. I am very happy to report that the camp went, the uh, Stuttgart camp went back to eating in their dining rooms, period. This uh, completed my relationship with uh, the Stuttgart camp and with the Jews from Rodham, Poland. And in uh, the end of October, uh, I went home to be separated from the Army, period, new paragraph. New paragraph. There are several other things in which you may be interested, peri uh, period. In my uh, weekly report, dated uh, August 8, 1945, I made this statement relating uh, to uh, the, this group of Jews from Rodham, Poland, Qu quotes, the Jewish camp of Langenzell was transferred to Stuttgart, thereby decreasing the DP population in this area by 150 people, period. Arrangements were made, however, to use the Gasthaus, G-A-S-T-H-A-U-S, -A -A in Wiesenbach, W-I-E-S-E-N-B-A-C-H, as a collecting point for Jews, period. We had a number of such collecting points, uh, one in uh, Heidelberg, which was in the home of David Wadlinger, W-O-R-D-L-I-N-G-E-R, who was Jewish, uh, comma, a Canadian, comma, and a uh, ex member of UNRWA staff, period. We, uh, uh, meaning uh, Hazelcorn and myself, stocked his home with uh, Red Cross parcels and clothing, 
so that uh, Jews who were not in DP camps or Jews who first came to the area were sent to uh, uh, Wadlinger uh, for uh, immediate uh, care, uh, period. If they did not want to go to uh, uh, Schloss Langenzell or to Stuttgart or to any other DP camp, we then uh, found uh, places for them and took care of them, but uh, f they stayed at Wardlinger's home for a short period of time, period. We also maintained a very large apartment in uh, Mannheim itself, in which the Schauder, S-C-H-A-U-D-E-R family lived. The family consisted of a uh, mother and uh, two sons, one at that time about uh, 14, uh, the other uh, about uh, 19. Uh, the apartment was large enough so that whenever we had any transient, transient Jews uh, in um, Mannheim, whom we could not place in a camp, they stayed with the Schauder family, period. We stocked uh, that apartment also with food and uh, clothing, period. The Schauders now live in San Diego since uh, my wife and I brought them to America many years ago, period. They are very close to Rabbi Hazelcorn, and uh, I am uh, going to talk with them uh, about their own recollections uh, of uh, their relationship with Rabbi Hazelcorn. And I will pass this information on to you, period. Incidentally, I recall that Wadlinger, uh, later on, uh, was a member of the Joint Distribution Committee staff uh, and served uh, in uh, Bergen-Belsen, period. Hazelcorn took care of the Schauders and uh, of all of the people uh, who lived in the Schauder household, period. The Schauders originally uh, were Polish. They had uh, maintained a... Um, uh, furniture store in Worms, Germany, uh, and when the Holocaust uh, uh, started, uh, one the father and one son were killed, period. Uh, incidentally, you will be interested to know that uh, Mrs. Schaller uh, was under the protection of a German Christian and acted as uh, a uh, housekeeper. Uh, she also worked in a home for uh, Jewish children uh, until the Nazis took it over, the period. Her two sons were saved by a Christian farmer uh, outside the Worms who kept them hidden for several years uh, until uh, Germany collapsed, period. New paragraph. I also remember an incident very early in the DP days of about uh, uh, eight uh, Polish Jewish girls coming out of the forest uh, wearing uh, uh, GI clothes, uh, all kinds of makeshift clothing, uh, and coming up to the uh, uh, office uh, to ask uh, for assistance. Period. News really gets around when there's an American Jew as an officer in the DP uh, section. Period. Uh, the girls uh, 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 were in pretty good health, but they had one request, and that was to uh, be deloused. De we uh, sent them over to the uh, camp, the DP camp in Mannheim, for delousing and to get some other clothing, and. Uh, uh, between Hazelcorn and myself, we took excellent care of them, uh, period. A uh, few weeks after they uh, uh, came out of uh, hiding, 
uh, a section of the Palestinian Brigade uh, came uh, to the Mannheim area, period. At, uh, the, uh, several of them came up uh, to the office uh, uh, to uh, tell me that uh, they had found uh, some relatives in our DP camp, uh, some girls, and they would like to get them back to Palestine, period. Uh, it turns out that these were the six or eight girls who we had the de deloused, and the uh, members of the Palestinian Brigade had located them. Uh, I doubt very much if they were relatives, cousins, or anything else, period. However, uh, I agreed that uh, they uh, could take the girls, and uh, we furnished a truck, and Sergeant Weiss drove uh, both the Palestinian boys uh, from the brigade and the girls to Hamburg. We gave them all kinds of food and clothing to take with them on the trip. Uh, from Hamburg, the uh, uh, Palestinian uh, brigade boys told me they had methods of getting the girls <coughs> to Israel, or what was then Palestine, period. Hazelcorn also had a good deal uh, to do with uh, this move, and was very, very helpful, period. I should point out that whenever problems arose, I turned to Hazelcorn for his advice and in some cases for him to do the job as a chaplain, which I felt uh, I could not do. New paragraph. Sometime in July, some of the uh, Jews from Rodham, Poland, who were now uh, healthy again, wanted to go back to uh, uh, Poland to see if they could find any of their relatives. Uh, I suggested to them that they go see uh, uh, the uh, Jewish chaplain of the 7th Army and uh, see if he could secure passes for them to freely travel from uh, Mannheim to uh, Rodham, Poland, or to Warsaw, period. Uh, the Jewish chaplain uh, uh, turned them down, uh, refused such uh, passes, and said it was uh, futile to even try, and they came back uh, to see me. I decided that regulations or no regulations, if this is what they wanted to do, they ought to be able to do it. And so I uh, prepared a letter on military government stationery. Uh, comma. Incidentally, I did this after discussing it with Hazel Karn, comma. And uh, uh, another, uh, and uh, in, in which I asked that any American uh, truck drivers uh, give these people a lift to wherever uh, they wanted to go, in the direction they were going, because they were Jewish displaced persons, and they had suffered tremendously, and they were trying to find uh, any remaining relatives uh, in Poland, period. About uh, a month or so after this pass, uh, these uh, letters were issued to these four or five uh, individuals. <coughs> they returned. Uh, to Mannheim and came up to the office and showed me these letters which they had placed in some kind of uh, Isenglass uh, containers uh, to preserve, period. They told me that the letters worked like a, a charm and that they had absolutely no difficulty in getting to Poland, period. Unfortunately, they could find uh, no, uh, uh, no one in their family still alive. New paragraph, I should also tell you about the incident of making arrangements with uh, the Joint Distribution Committee in Paris uh, under the direction of uh, Arthur Greenlee uh, for them to receive uh, Jews uh, from uh, our section uh, and to take uh, care of them, period. When we began doing repatriation uh, to uh, uh, France, uh, Belgium, and to Holland, uh, I made it a point to discuss with the these countries' liaison officers 
and repatriation officers on my staff, the uh, uh, taking of a small number of Jews in their convoy and dropping them off at uh, uh, the Joint Distribution Committee office in Paris. Period. This was perfectly agreeable to Captain uh, Jacques Bernard uh, of the Belgian Army and Captain Leo Van Zetten, Z-E-T-T-E-N, of the uh, Dutch Army. Period. And so in every uh, convoy that uh, we sent uh, up to uh, either uh, Holland, uh, Belgium, or Paris, uh, with these two men in charge and my Sergeant Weiss, uh, we always put 10 or 15 uh, Jewish men to be delivered to Arthur Greenlee for their care, period. Uh, actually, this turned out to be uh, really a mistake since uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, movement of uh, people uh, under the DP Act to the United States came uh, from the DP camps that these people had left, period. It was therefore necessary once that movement uh, was announced to have some of these people return to the DP camps uh, to be counted as uh, uh, stateless individuals to be uh, eligible under the DP Act. New paragraph. Uh, Rabbi Hazelcorn was very um, important in uh, getting the return of the Schauder Furniture Store in Worms uh, return, the get, returned to the uh, uh, Schauder family, period. Uh, we discussed this matter together and made plans of the best way of handling it, and Rabbi Hazelcorn went to Worms, discussed the problem with the uh, French authorities there, one of whom I had, with whom I had a very good relationship and had uh, sent a message to him, and uh, the French uh, restored this property to the Schauder family by uh, getting the uh, Germans who had uh, taken over the store uh, to leave and sign the necessary documents. New paragraph. When I was leaving uh, Germany to uh, go home and be separated from the army, the Jewish displaced persons of the area, mostly from uh, Stuttgart, gathered in uh, Mannheim at the Mannheim camp to give a party, a farewell party for me. Period. Included in the guests were many American officers, uh, hundreds of Jewish displaced persons, uh, UNRWA teams, JDC teams, uh, period. Uh, the uh, Jewish survivors from Stuttgart uh, made uh, by hand a memory book for me in which each of them wrote their name. They put pictures in the book and a number of comments. Uh, period. If this uh, material would be of value to you, I would uh, be glad to... Uh, Xerox it and send it on to you for whatever it's worth, period. If my uh, material from military government and my weekly reports uh, would be of interest to you or to Yehuda Bauer, uh, I am going to Xerox them uh, anyway for the purpose of uh, preserving them and I would be glad to, I will make an extra copy so that if you do want them, I will forward them for your archives, period. New paragraph, uh, Louis Levitan, L-E-V-I-T-A-N, -E -E succeeded me in my uh, position. Uh, at the present time, he is the regional director for the State of Israel bonds. His address is 5455 Wilshire Boulevard, 
Los Angeles, California, 90036, period. I uh, think that he can give you a great deal of information which will be helpful, period. New paragraph. You may be interested uh, in the following excerpts from some of my reports, period. June 1st, 1945, quotes, the number of stateless individuals seems to be on the increase. Plans should be made by higher headquarters to take care of such individuals until such time as governments agree on their dispersal. Until higher headquarters issues further directives, the problem must be met with the few directives we have now. We are attempting to house, clothe, and see that they are fed, period. In some cases, we have brought stateless people of the Jewish faith together so that they might take care of each other under the guide of the Jewish chapel in the area. These stateless people who have returned to Mannheim from concentration camps have been given...